Welcome back. We're going to use this simulation called Capacitor Lab. It's a FET simulation and the simulation will allow us to find out how the electric field between parallel plates that are shown here in the simulation are related to the voltage across the plates that we can adjust with this little slider on the battery and the physical dimensions of the plates themselves. We can move the plates up or down, get them closer together or further apart, known as the plate separation, or we can make the plate area smaller or bigger. And we want to see how those two things, as well as the voltage across the battery, affects the electric field between the plates. Now as you know, electric field is defined as force per charge, force per unit charge. So if there's a charge in between the plates, if there's an electric field present, that charge will either move up or down depending on the signs of the plates themselves. So a charged object in the presence of an electric field will experience a force. So clearly right now there's no voltage at all across the plates whatsoever so the plates have no charges so there is no electric field. Now let's start with the more obvious one. To get an electric field going we have to put some charge across the plates so I've got my battery here and we're going to turn it on. We're going to give it some voltage and right away you can see the top plate because it's connected to the positive side of the battery starts to develop a positive charge. You can see the little positive red charges on the top plate. The bottom plate, because it's connected to the negative side of the battery, you can see the little negative charges on the bottom of the plate. So the plates have piled up charge, positive on the top, negative on the bottom, and because these charges are now separated by this air gap, we generate an electric field, which you can see as these black field lines, which always point from positive down towards negative. Now, just to remind you guys, one thing about electric field lines, the density of the electric field lines, how many you actually see per centimeter or per square centimeter, tells you the strength of the electric field. And the direction is obviously the direction of the arrowhead themselves. So if I crank up the voltage, right, remember voltage, we can almost think of it as an electric pressure. If I crank up the electric pressure, I should push more charge onto these plates and you'll see that the density of those field lines increases quite dramatically. You can even see in the top there's lots and lots of positive charges now because my voltage is bigger. If my voltage gets smaller, the density of those field lines gets smaller as well. So our first effect, we've looked at voltage. Direct relationship. As voltage increases, so does the electric field. Now the other thing we can vary is the plate area. Now one thing about the plate area, I can move it in or I can move it out and clearly we're going to get more and more field lines as I move it out because the plates themselves are bigger and they can hold more charge but notice the density of the field lines actually doesn't change it's the same density whether it's small or large now to prove that point I actually can get an electric field meter so I'll grab that little detector here's my little electric field detector it's just a little probe and over here is the value of the electric field in volts per meter. So outside the parallel plates, if I put my probe anywhere outside, the electric field is zero. Once I go inside, it's telling me my electric field is 103 volts per meter. And it turns out that the volt per meter is the same thing as a Newton per Coulomb. We'll look at that later. So my electric field is uniform throughout. Even as I get closer to the negative plate, the field does not change. The density of those field lines does not change no matter where I put my probe. Now if I make the area bigger, yeah we have more field lines, but again the density does not change, my field is still 103 volts per meter. So plate area does not affect the value of our electric field. Now obviously it would matter in real life if we have a bigger plate area our electric field would hold more energy so this plate would last longer so if suddenly the battery was disconnected there'd be more charge on this plate to bleed off and service some other electric item but basically it's only related to the energy bigger the plate the more energy it stores but the electric field is the same so now let's look at plate separation it's often it's difficult to see the density of the little black field lines in the middle so just look at the top plate here and see where all the positives are you can see how dense the positives are and if I slide it up the density of those charges gets smaller. So stronger field as the plates are closer together and weaker as the plates are further apart. 
So as the distance between the plates increases, the electric field decreases. We have an inverse relationship there. Now that should make sense. If the plates are closer together, the negatives on the bottom plate are closer to the positives on the top and they're able to exert more force. So you're going to basically suck more charges onto that top plate because these negatives are so nearby. They're, they're going to really be able to pull hard and pile them up on that plate. Whereas as we get further and further away, because the force varies with distance, the force gets weaker and our electric field in turn gets weaker. And we can see that with our meter. As we're far away, our electric field is 74 volts per meter. And as I get closer and closer together, my electric field goes all the way up to 149 volts per meter. So inverse relationship between electric field and plate separation. On a last note, let's derive the new equation to determine the electric field in between parallel plates. So for this, I'm going to crank up my voltage to 1.5 volts, and I'm going to separate my plates as much as I can to 10 millimeters. And we'll get the area as large as we can too, so we can really see what's going on. Now, let's get rid of our field lines for a second, just to imagine what we're talking about. If I place a positive charge just floating in between these plates, obviously it will be repelled from the top plate and attracted towards the bottom negative plate and it will end up accelerating towards the bottom negative plate and smashing into it. Now if I want to take that positive charge and move it back to the top, I have to do work on it. So the work done to take that charge from bottom to top is equal to force times distance. Now what we're doing when we're changing that location of that charge is changing its potential energy and since work is change in energy the work done will go into changing its potential energy and we know that potential energy can be calculated by using voltage or your change in voltage times Q so our force times distance our work is equal to V times Q or change in voltage times Q we know that the force stays constant between parallel plates because the field lines are constant. And if you'll recall, the electric field is given by force over Q. So force is actually E times Q. So if I substitute that into our equation, I get E times Q times D is equal to change in voltage times Q. The Q's cancel and I end up getting with a little bit of manipulation, the electric field between parallel plates is given by my change in voltage across the plates divided by the separation D. Remember, D was the distance we had to move that charge, which was the plate separation. So electric field is change in voltage over D for parallel plates. Let's quickly check our equation with our simulation. If I grab my electric field detector, right now it's reading zero, and I place it in between the plates, what value would we expect? Well, the electric field is change in voltage, which is 1.5 volts from top to bottom, divided by separation. Now, the separation should be in meters, so it's 10 millimeters, which is 0 0.01 meters. 1.5 divided by 0 0.01 gives us 150 volts per meter, which is what our simulation is telling us.